a professor at a prestigious institution of higher learning walked around the room while teaching stress management to a class. As she raised a glass of water, everyone expected to be asked the question, is it half full or half empty? But instead, with a smile, she asked, how heavy is this glass of water? To which answers ranged out saying, eight ounces, 20 ounces. And she replied, the absolute weight doesn't matter. It depends on how long I hold it. If I hold it for a minute, it's not a problem. If I hold it for an hour, I'll have an ache in my arm. If I hold it for a day, my arm will feel numb and paralyzed. In each case, the weight of the glass doesn't change. But the longer I hold it, the heavier it becomes. She continued, the worries and fears in life are like this glass of water. Think about them for a minute and nothing happens. Think about them a bit longer and they begin to hurt. And if you think about them all day long, you will feel paralyzed, incapable of doing anything. It is important to remember to let go of your burdens. As early as you can, put your burdens down. Don't carry them through the evening and into the night. And she finished by saying, remember to put This morning, I want to talk about being set free from the things that can weigh you down and hold you back in this new year. You know, with burdens, trials, and afflictions, we need to let go and let God. Let us pray. Our most kind and loving Father. It is with great joy that we are able to enter into your house today. And as we prepare to meditate upon your word, we pray for a double portion of your Holy Spirit. That he may come into our hearts and our minds, that we may gain a better understanding of the beautiful things that you have in store for each and every one of us. Lord, help us come to realize that we need to cast all of our cares, all of our worries, all of our burdens upon you. For you will take care of our needs. Be with us now as we worship you. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, many of us carry burdens, right? Some have to carry heavier burdens than others. Some seem harassed and frustrated at every turn on the road of life. Some have little conception of the hidden burdens that others are carrying. You know, many breaking hearts are camouflaged by a smiling face. Often the deepest and the heaviest burdens that individuals carry are those not seen with the naked eye, right? You know, so in the first place then, let us consider what kind of burdens people carry. There are burdens that have to do with the home. Most of us, our home life is sweet, right? But this is not the case for everyone. In many homes, there is poverty, sickness, sorrow, abuse, and fighting. Many live in fear in their own home. You know, they're in no hurry to get home from work, for home is a place 
of pain, of pressure, and of problems. You know, there is the burden of wayward children and disobedient children, or of a mother or father or husband or wife who have gone astray and manufactured for themselves and their loved ones a hellish environment and an unhappy state. There are burdens that have to do with work and business responsibilities. I know for Jasmine and I, client and customer pressure and supplier and contractor problems are mounting, and you have to maneuver a path between them. And maybe you work at a place where their people seem so wicked, right? So anti-God, so anti-Christ. And what you hear all day long is one filthy joke after another. You know, it's hard to be a Christian where you work and you feel unable to cope and often unwilling to continue to work there. But you have to. Now, did you know that there are burdens also connected with the Lord's work and church life? Yeah. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, Beside other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. You may wonder how you're going to take care of all the financial obligations of your church, right? Of your business and of your home. You wonder how to help all those wayward or lost souls. You may have to ask how you can win more people to Jesus when you yourself feel unequal to the task then what about the burden of criticism and the burden of those who don't like you or may mistrust you, right? Then there are the burdens that have to do with our friends. You know, our enemies don't need a sign, need to wear a sign saying, I'm your enemy, right? We know who they are. It wasn't an enemy that hated David. The psalmist, it was a friend. He writes in Psalms chapter 55, verses 12 to 14, for it is not an enemy who reproaches me. Then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me. Then I could hide from him. But it was you, a man my equal, my companion and my acquaintance, we took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in company. Mm. Sad, isn't it? What a friend can do to you. You know, we don't make many intimate or close friends in a lifetime. So the ones we have, we had better treat right. And I'm told that in old age, which I'm already at, Intimate friends are hard to come by. Yet being a close friend can often add to our burdens in that we unknowingly and unwillingly become entangled in the problems of our friends. Amen? Then there are physical burdens, right? The aches and pains of life. Some have been sick for a long time. They wonder how much longer they can take it. They worry about the future, about long-term care and long-term help and long-term finances. There are also temperamental burdens. And sometimes they are the hardest to bear. You know, fear, anxiety, worry, Depression, even despair. Many have to work on these burdens all the time. Then there is the burden of the loss of a loved one. Husband, wife, child, a parent. You don't know how you're going to make it through these dark times. We've all been there. 
We've all experienced the loss of a loved one. And what about the burden of disappointment? Hmm? You didn't get that new job, the new car, or that new house. Boys are disappointed that they didn't get that special girlfriend. You know, most guys think that they're standing at the last chance station. Let any girl come by and weak at them and they fall all over themselves. And you know, girls are no different. Many go to pieces when they don't get that one special guy that they wanted for their boyfriend or husband. Well, thank God you didn't. Because if he or she wasn't the one God chose for you, you in for a rough road. So, saints of God, you see, life is simply full of burdens, cares, and anxieties, problems, pressures, and pain. And I've only scratched the surface, as I'm sure you will all agree to. So then, let us consider, what are we to do with our burdens? You know, a long time ago, I came to understand that There is no relief for our burdens in complaining or self-pity. We are not to despair in the midst of our trials. Despair will not lift one burden. But you know, in the Bible, we are told what to do with our burden. First, acknowledge and accept it is from the Lord. Now, the word burden literally means to carry a heavy load, that which was given to you. Now, this is found in the Revised Standard Version of Psalms chapter 55, verse 22. Or it can actually mean gift. Now, did you ever think of a burden as a gift from God? You know, that burden, that trial, that tribulation, is that God's doing? Well, yes, it is. He has permitted it for a very wise and loving purpose that we don't understand. You know, it's been said, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Right? Burdens and trials builds character. They transform common Christians into uncommon saints. Burdens are part of God's plans for us. Now, they aren't especially welcome, but they can and do increase our faith. They have a way of driving us to our need. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will always provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Y'all get that? Peter gives us some counsel on this as well in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 13. He said, dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. Isn't that wonderful? You know, a good example of this is also found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, where Paul writes, Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. 
So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. You know, how slack we get sometimes and how easily we forget him and lift ourselves up when things are going smoothly and there are no problems. Brothers and sisters, we need to thank God and count it all joy for the burdens and trials and the problems we encounter because they help us to examine ourselves. You know that burden? Whatever it is, accept it from the Lord as a way for you to know him better. His grace will see you through it. You know, this reminds me of the song, he give it more grace. He give it more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sends more strength when the labors increase. To added affliction, he adds his mercy. To multiply trials, he multiplies peace. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto me. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he give it and give it and give it again. When we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength has failed and the day is half done, when we reach the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's full giving is only begun. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. For Jesus give it and give it and give it again. Isn't that wonderful? The second thing we ought to do is to let the Lord carry the burden for you. You know, David tells us in Psalms chapter 55 verse 22 to cast your burden, what he has given you on the Lord. He will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to fall. You know, since the burden is too heavy for you, give it to the Lord to carry. You know that word cast literally means to fling or throw. Now, it requires and denotes action and effort, right? So throw that burden upon the Lord. Remember Daniel, in chapter 6, verse 16, it tells us that they cast Daniel into the den of lions. The king's men grabbed Daniel by the nap of the neck and they threw him into the lion's den. It took some action on their part, but they did it. And you know, Matthew also uses the same word in chapter 4, verse 12. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Y'all remember, the guards got John by the nap of the neck, and they tossed him into prison. It took some action on their part, but they did it. So what am I saying to you this morning? Cast your burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to fall. It will take some action on your part, but you can do it. And thirdly, leave the burden with the Lord. The Bible teaches that the Lord is the great burden bearer. His gracious words to every saint found in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, our scripture reading for today, is come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isn't it wonderful know, to know that Jesus cares? In our weakness, we see his strength and the all-sufficiency of his grace. Brothers and sisters, I want you to learn this. We cannot but he can. Your burdens, 
whatever they are, will you cast them on the Lord today? It's too heavy for you. So let him carry it. And once we have cast our burdens upon the Lord, guess what? He assumes full responsibility for the burdens for us. And he promises to sustain us and to uphold us. How wonderful is this? He will sustain you and do even more. He shall never permit the righteous to fall. Never. But here is the key. You have to let go and let God take care of it. As a child bring their broken toys with tears for us to mend, I brought my broken spirit to God because he is my friend. But instead of leaving him in peace to work alone, I hung around and tried to help with ways that were my own. At last, I snatched them back again and cried, how could you be so slow? My child, he said. What could I do? You never did let go. Let go of your burdens, brothers and sisters. You don't have to carry the heavy load. Over 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus carried the burden of sin to the cross there. And all we have to do is repent, let go of it, claim our pardon, and ask him for forgiveness. Come to that cross by faith today and unload that burden of unforgiven sin and ask Jesus to save you, and he will. Be relieved of that burden once and for all. You see, Calvary made a difference to the things that you and I wrestle with each and every day that we live in this world. And you know, sometimes we bring unnecessary burdens and afflictions on ourselves as a consequence of the choices that we make. Did y'all get that? I, I got to say that again. Sometimes we bring unnecessary, unnecessary burdens and afflictions on ourselves as a consequence of the choices that we make. For example, the smoker who gets lung cancer, or the woman caught up in adultery tears apart her marriage, or the man who drinks too much and decides to drive home and gets into an accident which kills another entire family. The individuals within these persons' fear of influence can be burdened as well. That's a result of sin. And unless you get rid of the sin burden, it will prevent you from getting free from all the others. Amen. You know, sin causes a blockage in the channel between man and God. God cannot hear the prayers of the unrepentful. The whole system is infected by it. And it shuts down communication with the Almighty. You know, it's like a computer virus that needs to be removed in order to prevent a system failure. You know, like a virus, you can cover sin, you can patch it up, isolate it, work around it, but sooner or later, later the crash is inevitable. The infection will spread and the disease will kill. Sin needs expert treatment. And there is no greater storehouse of that at the place called Calvary. No one have genuinely or sincerely brought their burden of sin to that location, laid it down, and surrendered it to Jesus, ever walked away without a complete and total repair. And more, Jesus gives a new life to all who seek and find him there. Let us praise God today. Amen. You know, the hymn writer said, if you are tired of the load of your sin, let Jesus come into your heart. 
If you desire a new life to begin, let Jesus come into your heart. Just now your doubting give over. Just now reject him no more. Just now throw open the door and let Jesus come into your heart. And if you do, he will change you forever. Oh, brothers and sisters, he is the only one who can effectively offload our burden of sin and our wrongdoing. Jesus is the only way for us to get into a relationship with God. No amount of good deeds, no amount of church going can make any difference or bring us into favor with the Father. He sent Jesus to do that. And did you know our Lord himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. So my question for you today is what will you do with your burden? Whatever it may be. The story is told of a pastor who brought a big box of theological books at an auction near to his home. He walked to the sale that day without taking his car, but he had brought way more, more books than he expected, forgetting that he would have to walk home. So carrying this heavy burden of books in a large box in front of him, he began his journey home for the few blocks that he had to go. And on the way, he met one of his parishioners who, in a kind of confrontation of manner, asked him, Pastor, how do you know you're saved? And the pastor put the box down, and he said to the man, how do I know I'm not carrying that big box of books? Well, it's because I, you can see it sitting over there on the ground, answered the man. The pastor said, yes, and I can see I am saved from all the promises God has written for me in the Bible. But not only that, like those books, I don't feel the weight of my sins any longer, for I have laid them down at Calvary. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, 2020 brought many changes and challenges to our daily lives. And while we can't forecast exactly how 2021 will unfold, one thing we can be sure of, many of us will encounter some kind of trial or tribulation. And today, I'm asking everyone who hears me now, Whatever your burden is, will you cast it on the Lord? Find the path to Calvary and unload and leave it there. It is or may be too heavy for you. So let the Lord carry it. And once it's gone, huh, you will know it. But you got to let go and let God.